Great, welcome back to Learning SDR with Prof. Jason. Last time we talked about on-off keying, which was pretty simple. We just turned a carrier wave on or off and measured, uh, measured what, what we uh, received. So we, did, we transmitted from the Pluto and we turned the transmitter on and off and we received on the RTL SDR. And the way we received it was we looked at the amplitude of the complex number that we received because recall the amplitude of the complex number that comes in is proportional to the amplitude of the wave. So today we'll do sort of the next level of sophistication where instead of just turning it on and off, we'll shift between several different amplitudes. So you can imagine that the real waveform that gets transmitted is made, is made up of different levels. So for a while it's, it's oscillating at you know, around a gigahertz at one amplitude, and then we'll switch it to be oscillating at around a gigahertz at a different amplitude, and then we'll switch it to maybe be off for a while, and then switch it to a third level. And what we receive is we receive a complex number whose amplitude is proportional to the amplitude of the real signal that we're transmitting, and whose phase is rotating not at a gigahertz or wherever we're transmitting, but at the difference between where uh, the Pluto is tuned to and where the RTL SDR is tuned to. And even if we tune to the exact same frequency, the hardware clocks are slightly different. So we will actually get slightly different, uh, slightly different frequencies. So let me, let me uh, make a flow graph that's very similar to last time's, except with some simplifications. So let me share my screen and I'll start radio. I'm going to call this uh, amplitude shift keying, ASK, and save it as ASK. And as usual, I'll set my sample rate to be one mega sample per second. That's a pretty uh, reasonable sample rate. And let me pull down my Pluto source to transmit. So that's under IIO, Pluto. Sorry, Pluto sync to transmit. And my RTL SDR source down here under uh, oh, Osmo SDR, right? To receive. Okay, so the first thing we need to do besides sample rate is to define a center frequency. So I'm just going to pull down a new variable. And I'm going to call this center frequency. So this is where both of them will be nominally tuned. So center. Frequency, and I'll tune them to 915 megahertz, which is the center of an industrial, scientific, and medical band, at least here in the US and, and uh, other countries in our region. Okay, so the, the things I need to change here in the Pluto SDR, I need to change the local oscillator frequency to be center, the center frequency. Uh, but because the Pluto demands integers, I need to remember to cast that floating point number as an integer, center frequency. And the sample rate is also an integer, integer is samp rate. And everything else is probably fine. This bandwidth I could probably reduce to also be sample rate. Um, let me give this transmitter attenuation a name just so I can change it more easily in uh, while we're running. So let me call this TX. Attenuation, and I will put that on a range slider like we did last time. So, oops, TX attenuation. Uh, the default value, I'll keep the default value of the Pluto, which was 10, and this goes from zero to somewhere around 90. I think it actually goes to 89 maybe before you get an error in steps of one, that's good enough. Okay, and in my RTL, I'm still sampling at sample rate and my frequency that I'm going to be turn tuning to is going to be center frequency. And since this is orange, I don't need to cast this as an integer. I think everything else is, is fine. Uh, maybe I will give an Rx gain with Rx gain on a slider also. So let me just copy this range. 
And instead of Tx attenuation, it'll be Rx gain. Oops. Rx gain. And uh, the default value is 10. That's fine. And I'll go from 0 to 70, which I think is the, the range here where you don't get an error. OK. So now the question is, what do I want to transmit? Well, last time we transmitted a tone, and I turned the tone on or, on or off by multiplying it by some, some other source. This time, I won't, even, I won't even bother transmitting a tone. I'll just transmit a bunch of constants. And I'll let the transmitter multiply that by a cosine and turn it into the high frequency, 915 megahertz. So what are the constants I'm going to transmit? Well, I'll just make a list of constants with a vector, a vector source. And I'll just list the constants that I'm going to transmit. And these will become the amplitudes, at least proportional to the amplitudes, of my radio frequency wave that gets transmitted. So you can see that there's a list here. The default is 0, 0, 0. Um, I'll keep the type to be complex, so we don't have to do any type conversion. But let me make this 0 and uh, 1.0 over 3.0, so a third, uh, 2.0 over 3.0. And in Python, you don't need the .0s, but in older versions, you did, and 1.0. So these will be, uh, these will be uh, four different numbers. Zero amplitude, a third of an amplitude, two thirds of an amplitude, and full amplitude. And we'll just transmit, repeat that, yes, repeat that over and over and over again. All right, so then what I want to do is I want to take each of these. Since each of these are, are coming out um, one by one, I want to make sure that I have a few samples of, of each. So I'm going to repeat, repeat each one, let's say, 100 times. And I'm going to make a new variable for that. And I'm going to call that samples per symbol, SPS. And I'm going to make that 100. So what is a symbol? A symbol is, uh, let me stop sharing for a second. So a, a symbol is a more general version of a bit in digital communications. So if we have four different amplitudes here, say this no amplitude, a third, two thirds, full amplitude. Uh, if those are the four things that I'm switching between, we have four different symbols that we can transmit in every little time slot. And uh, you, you have to keep track of how many different symbols there are in each time slot. And this is a difference between the, the, the bit rate where we only had two different options at each time slot before, and this more general amplitude shift keying where we can switch between four different levels. So at each little time slot, since we have four different levels we can choose between, we can actually transmit two different bits. And we can assign this zero amplitude to be zero, zero. We can assign this one to be zero, one. We can assign this one to be uh, one, zero, so the bit two. And we can assign that one to be one, one. The, the, the bits for three. Well, that, a, a certain rate where you're switching between these symbols, but that's not necessarily the same thing as the bit rate if each of your symbols can represent more than one bit. So let me go back to sharing my screen, and that, that'll give us this notation that we'll use, which is samples per symbol. So I'm going to take each, each of these symbols here, and I'm going to repeat it 100 times. So it'll be 100 samples of each kind of symbol. And I won't do anything else. I'll just send that right to my, my Pluto SDR sync. So these are all real numbers. So they'll all just turn into real amplitudes with no phase shift. And when this Pluto transmits, it will multiply a very fast cosine, a 915 megahertz cosine, by these different amplitudes. And it will always multiply the sine by 0. So since the imaginary part that I'm putting in is 0. So I'm just going to have a cosine. It's being multiplied by a bunch of different amplitudes. Uh, just so that I, I know what I'm doing, let me make sure that I, I plot it so we can see what we're actually transmitting. So QT GUI, time sync. I will just plot that. And since we've got 100 samples per symbol, let me actually bump this up to be that times 8. And uh, these, these are happening at the sample rate, since that's what we're we're putting into the, the Pluto. Uh, 
All right, so let's see what this looks like on the receiving side. So let me put down a, as usual, we'll look at the raw data that, that comes right out of our, our receiver. So we'll look at it in time and in frequency. And I also want to look at it in a, in a different way, which is using this constellation sync. So this is plotting each point on the real and uh, on the complex plane. So real and imaginary axis. And I'll connect it to all three of these. And we'll just look at what comes out here. And let's see, do I want to change this? Yeah, let me, in my time sync, let me also just multiply this by eight so that we're on the same kind of scale here. Okay, so if I play this, we should transmit zero, a third, two thirds, and one over and over and over again. And I should receive that. So here is, I mean, I should have labeled these a little bit. So this clean plot is what I'm transmitting, zero, uh, a third, two thirds, and one. And the blue trace is the real part, and it is what is stepping and then resetting. The red trace is the imaginary part, which is always zero. And uh, what I'm receiving in time looks like this. It is not quite the same thing because the, the clocks are not quite the same. So let me actually pause this, stop it and zoom in. And it's a little bit hard to tell here, but there is zero for a while and then a small amplitude and then a medium amplitude and then a big amplitude and then back to zero pretty abruptly. Uh, so let me play that again. And if I look at the peak of this frequency distribution, it is not quite at zero. And this will give us a clue as to what frequency offset we might need if we wanted to bother. So it's, we're a little bit uh, low by 14 kilohertz. But if you look at the plot of the real and the imaginary parts here, and let me change the scale here so that they're roughly in line and I can zoom in. We see that we get some pretty distinct circles. Actually, that's me moving around. You're seeing uh, more or less uh, reflections off of me into the, into the RTLSDR. But there's a bunch of points right here around zero. There's a bunch of points with magnitude of around a third. There's a bunch of points with magnitude around two thirds and uh, a bunch of points with magnitude of one with respect to the received signal strength. So of course I can turn up the, the gain of the RTLSDR and get bigger and bigger circles here. Let me zoom out. Uh, if I turn up the gain too much, I eventually saturate. And you can see they sort of all go to, to the, the limits there. So that's not what we want. And our, our waves have saturated. So we need to manually adjust the gains to be pretty reasonable. But here, here we have four different levels. And this gives us a clue as to how to decode it. So if, if all we care about is the level, the magnitude, and we don't care about the fact that the phases are not quite perfectly aligned, we can just take the magnitude of these complex numbers that are coming out, and that will help us to decode what's, what's coming out. So let me, let me do that just to, to decode what's happening here. So complex to magnitude is a block for, for that, to decode it. Uh, this is what we used last time when we did the on-off keying. And I'm going to keep one in n samples. So this isn't the best way to do the timing uh, synchronization because I'm keeping one random sample out of those hundred samples, but this will at least get us something. And what is my n? Well, since I'm, I have a hundred samples per symbol, I will keep one in hundred of those samples. Now let me plot both the magnitude Oops, magnitude as a real number. And I'll plot it on the same scale as everything else times eight. And I will plot the decoded, uh, sorry, the, the sampled one in N as a real number. And uh, let me actually plot way fewer points here. So about a hundred points. Okay. So if I play this, let's find our new, our new plots. 
Oops. Uh, I think Zoom is screwing up the top of the screen here. Let me just move it like that. Okay, so our new plots are um, here, the magnitude, and here, the little points that go up, 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 up. So let me let me plot the actual the points. I forgot to I forgot to plot the samples. I think that'll help us a little bit here. So if I go into my time sink and I configure the uh, a marker to be circle, and I config the marker to be circle, I can zoom in on those two plots and actually see samples. So for our our keep one in n, it looks pretty good. There's some glitches. And if I look at my uh, my samples here, you can see that if I zoom in, there are many, many samples uh, of each at each level. And my transmitter and my receiver are extremely close to each other, and I'm actually transmitting extremely loudly. My transmitter attenuation is, is not nearly as high as it probably should be. Oops, let me set that to be a little bit higher. And now I have to zoom way in. And you can sort of see that the levels aren't quite as clearly defined anymore. And my levels here aren't quite as clearly defined, but you could sort of see a stair, a stair steppy pattern. So this would be sort of equivalent to moving farther and farther away is, uh, is uh, increasing the transmitter attenuation. And I could fix that to some extent by upping the, the receiver gain, but I'm also amplifying much more noise. So you can see that these hundred points are pretty noisy uh, in, in my stair stepping pattern. And when I just keep one in a hundred, the one that I keep is kind of bouncing around. And so there's a couple of problems with this. One is I should probably be trying to average over uh, a couple of these points to really maximize my signal to noise. And, and two, sometimes you see these, these glitches that come by. If I happen to keep the one in a hundred samples that's right on a transition, I'm not, I'm not gonna get a very clean signal. So there's a couple of problems with this, but this is our first example where we are transmitting more than one bit per symbol. And uh, the, the goal here of digital communications is to maximize the data rate while minimizing the radio frequency bandwidth that we're taking up. And if we look at the bandwidth we're taking up, it seems to be peaked in, uh, in a small area but actually a lot of this is us transmitting. So the bandwidth of the signal with very sudden changes in the stair-stepping pattern is actually much wider than we need. So uh, after we talk about some other modulation schemes, we'll really work to push this to the limit. So you can already see that what limits the, the number of amplitudes that we can, that we can uh, have per symbol? Well, the, it's sort of the, the noise in your system, which is some combination of how far away you are and just how much noise there is uh, at your receiver. And what limits how fast you can go? Well, what limits how fast you can go is mostly the, the bandwidth you're willing to take up and we're not at all optimizing for bandwidth. So, so we'll, we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll do more along these lines. So the square pulses that we're transmitting are, are pretty inefficient. All right. So, so the homework that you have, the homework that you have for today, for this section, is for high transmitter attenuation and low receiver gain. Where does it really get too too noisy to distinguish the levels? And if you're if you have access to two different computers, it might be fun to have one be the transmitter and one be the receiver, and see how far away you can go before the levels merge with each other. All right, I'll see you next time.